Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to discuss a powerful theorem in electrical and computer engineering which allows us to take a complicated circuit and make it a much simpler one. And this is the idea of Thevenin's theorem. Thevenin is an idea that lets you have a, if you have a really large circuit that you have to work with, what we're going to do is we're going to take that really big circuit and we're going to transform it or create an equivalent circuit which is going to be much, much simpler. Thevenin's theorem was named after a French engineer, um, Leon Charles Thevenin, who worked for a telegraph company. And his theorem states that any network that is composed of linear elements and sources, and the word any is important, because I mean that means that's that covers a broad range of circuits, but any network composed of linear elements and sources can be represented simply by a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. So the Thevenin discovered and, and showed us how that we can take any arbitrary circuit, it could be a huge circuit with literally millions of resistors and sources in it, and it can all be represented by a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. And this simple circuit of a voltage source in series with a resistor acts the exact same way, at least in, in an electrical sense, as the very large complicated circuit. Thevenin's theorem is a incredibly powerful theorem that lets us take arbitrarily complicated circuits and make very simple equivalent circuits that we can then look at, analyze, and really get our head wrapped around pretty easily. All right, as our fashion is, I'll give you a kind of a recipe to get you started. So for Thevenin's theorem, if we have a particular location in the circuit that we're interested in, or a particular element we'd like to figure out how it behaves, we need to want to find a Thevenin equivalent circuit that goes around it. So we need to do, at the circuit of interest, we need to find the open circuit voltage VOC. The next, we're going to find the short circuit current ISC. And then we can get Thevenin circuit by saying the Thevenin voltage, the single voltage source we need, V Thevenin, is going to be equal to VOC. And the resistor that goes in series with that is going to be VOC over ISC. So if we take the circuit of element of interest, open it, find VOC. Take the circuit element of interest, short it out, find ISC, and then using those two numbers, we have the two the number we can get the values for the Thevenin circuit, which is equivalent. All right, let's do an example. So here we have a circuit, and in this case, we see that there is a resistor right here, R sub L, and this is the resistor maybe that we don't know what value it is, or maybe we're experimenting and we'd like to find you know a particular R sub L that has some behavior. So this is the circuit of this is the element of interest. This is the element that we're going to play with, and instead of you know picking a value of R sub L like one ohm and solving the circuit and then picking a value of R sub L equals 10 ohms and solving the circuit, and then R L is 100 ohms, and so forth and so on. Doing it hundreds and hundreds of times over and over again. What we'd like to do is we'd like to come up with a equivalent circuit to replace all the stuff inside the box, and then we can change R sub L, and the circuit's much easier to play with. All right? So let's get started. So remember to get started, we need to look at the circuit element of interest, and our element of interest is this R sub L resistor, and the first thing we need to do is we got to find VOC. We want to open R sub L and find VOC. And then we're going to come along and we're going to short out R sub L, and we're going to find ISC, and once we have those two values, we can find the Thevenin equivalent circuit as given in our recipe. So we need to find VOC and ISC. So here we are, we've taken R sub L, we've removed it, R sub L is now an open, and so now we're looking for VOC. What is the value that appears right here at the place of interest, that is where R sub L was, what value, of what voltage appears there when that, vo when that circuit element is opened? Okay, so it's an open circuit. So since it's an open circuit, we know there is no current flowing. So we know that the current going in this direction must be zero amperes. Why? Because it's an open circuit. There is nowhere for the current uh, to go. Now if no current is flowing through the resistor, then we know that we have zero voltage drop across the resistor. And so in this case, the resistor is in the circuit, but there is no voltage drop across it, so it, it's going to act like a wire. So VOC is going to also be the voltage right there. VOC is going to be the voltage across the current source. And so I'd like to find out what VOC is. And this is really very straightforward and because we know we have a 2 milliamps which is flowing up in this direction. We know the current going to the right must be 0. Therefore, the current going to the left must be 
2 milliamps. And if 2 milliamps is flowing to the left, then I know passive sign convention says I'm going to have a 4 volt drop across that resistor. And now we can simply write KVL. Minus 4, starting down here, minus 4, minus 4 across the 2K ohm resistor, plus VOC, that gets back to where I started from, equals 0. And when I solve for this, I see VOC must equal 8 volts. So if I take the resistor, R sub L resistor out, and then I just open it, what voltage VOC is generated? 8 volts. So now we need to find ISC. We're going to take the load resistor R sub L out, and then we're going to short out, short its location. So in this case, I'm looking for the current I. SC that flows through, this is the location where R sub L was, it's now a short, I want to find the current that flows when R sub L is shorted. So how can we find I, uh, I short circuit in this case? Well, there's a lot of different cases, you know, we could use a, a super mesh or you can use nodal analysis or anything you want, and so I'm going to go for superposition. And so superposition says that we can find anything we're interested in. In this case, I'm interested in finding I short circuit. I can find I short circuit by finding I short circuit due to each of these sources acting alone. So we'll redraw the circuit once again into the two cases. We'll kill the current source and just have the 4 volt voltage source. And so now I'm looking for the current ISC, and I'll call it ISCA, which flows in this direction. Well, you can see when the current source is open, this gets to be very straightforward. I short circuit A, uh, the, there's only going to be one current flowing. It's going to flow around this direction, and the current's going to be 4 volts, and then the 2 and the 3K ohms are in series, and so we'll see I short circuit A is simply going to be 0 0.8 milliamps. 0 0.8 milliamps. Now we're going to kill the 4 volt source and turn the current source back on and we have the circuit here on the right. And so now we're looking for I short circuit B. This is the current that's going to flow through R sub L when it's shorted out and this is the sub response due to the 2 milliamp source acting alone. And so this is the scenario we have here on the right. And we can see that I short circuit B and if you look at the circuit we see we have a, a textbook example of current division. We have 2 milliamps, which is going to flow up. Some of it's going to go this direction, and some of it is going to go to the right. And so the current I'm looking for is the 2 milliamps. The 2 milliamps is going to be current divided. It's going to be current divided between a 2K ohm and a 3K ohm resistor. I'm looking for the current flowing down this direction, which is the current in the 3K ohms. Therefore, we put the 2 up on the top and I short circuit B is going to also be 0 0.8 milliamps. They're the same value simply because of coincidence. Superposition says, using superposition says I can find anything I'm looking for by finding the sub-responses due to each source acting along and adding them up. So I short circuit, this is I short circuit in the original problem, is going to be I short circuit A plus I short circuit B, and we'll get 1.6 milliamps. So going back to this problem, we find I short circuit is going to be 1.6 milliamps. Now remember we said that the V thevenin is going to be VOC, which in this case is going to be uh, 8 volts, and then we have the R thevenin is V OC over ISC, and so VOC is 8 volts, ISC is 1.6 milliamps, and so, and that ends up being 5 K ohms. So these are the two values I need. So I can go to the original problem again, and so we have the original problem up here in the top left. This is the circuit we have, and so if I'm interested in what the R sub L resistor sees, and R sub L is a resistor that lives right here, so R sub L is a resistor, I don't know what value it is. It could be driven by this circuit in the top left inside the black box, or we saw I can replace this with an 8 volt source and put it in series with a 5 K ohm resistor. And Thevenin's theorem says that this circuit, 
8k volts in series with 5k ohms will act identical to the circuit that was originally driving R sub L. So instead of driving R sub L with the circuit inside the, the box, I can simply drive it with this circuit and R sub L is going to act exactly the same. That is, R sub L cannot tell the difference between the original circuit in the top left and this simplified version that we got from Thevenin's theorem. And this circuit of 8k volts in series with uh, excuse me, eight, 8 volts in series with 5k ohms is a much, much simpler circuit to deal with than the original one. Let's try another example. So we'll take the circuit and then we'll modify it a touch by adding a controlled source instead of uh, the uncontrolled or independent source. And the question in this case, once again, is here's a value of R sub L and I am looking for the circuit that looks like this, a V Thevenin voltage, and it's going to be in series with a resistor we'll call R Thevenin, and I'm going to attach this new circuit to R sub L, and I would like to know, I'm interested in knowing what value of RTH and what value of VTH can I use in this circuit so that I get the exact same behavior in my load resistor R sub L. What values do I choose here and here so that R sub L can't tell the difference? And we have our little recipe for it. In order to do this, whenever anyone says Thevenin's theorem, our little recipe tells us we need to find VOC and we need to find ISC. And once we find these two numbers, then we can compute the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So let's redraw the circuit. Let's take R sub L. Let's take R sub L. Let's remove it and find VOC, and then we're going to replace R sub L with a short and find I short circuit, ISC. So taking our circuit and redrawing it, we have this scenario. Uh, the load resistor R sub L has been removed and replaced with an open circuit. All right, so this is VOC. This is the open circuit voltage, and that's what we're looking for. All right, so let's get started. It's an open circuit voltage, so once again, I know that this current is zero amperes. If that's zero amperes, then I know that I have a zero volt drop, and effectively the 3K ohm resistor is going to act like a wire. Furthermore, I know that VOC is the voltage that's going to appear over there. So we can find it by simply starting and writing KVL. Minus four. Right? And then the current, notice the current Vx over 4000, the current Vx over 4000 is headed up. We know it's not going to the right because there's no current there, so Vx over 4000 must go this way. So the current going to the left is going to be Vx over 4000. Well, if the current is flowing to the left through the 2K ohm resistor, I'm going to expect a drop like this. So I have negative 4 through the voltage source, minus, and what is the voltage drop across the 2K ohm resistor? Well, it's 2,000 ohms, that's the resistance, times the current flowing through the 2,000 ohm resistor, and that's going to be, uh, excuse me, Vx over 4,000, and then we have plus to minus Voc, which is also Vx, and that must equal to 0. And when you solve for this equation, you'll find that Vx equals 8 volts. And again, remember Vx is Voc. So there's the number we're looking for, 8 volts for Voc. So now we take our circuit, we remove R sub L, and we replace it with a short, and now we're looking for the value of I short circuit, which flows through the short there. So this is I short circuit, and we, how do we find this guy? Well, notice that we have here is that this is the, we've shorted out the load, so the voltage here, it's a short, so the voltage here is zero volts, and so we see that Vx, Vx equals zero volts, because the Vx voltage has been shorted out. So if Vx equals zero, Vx equals zero is going to obviously mean that Vx over 4,000 is going to equal zero, and so this voltage source has a value of zero amps. It's a zero amp 
current source. And so what this means is that guy is not even there. It's, a, it's an open. It's like it's not even in the circuit. There's no current flowing. So this is the resulting circuit, and we can see quite easily that I short circuit, the I short circuit number we're looking for, is simply going to be the 4 volt resistor, and the 4 volt resistor sees a 2K ohm and a 3K ohm in series. So it's 4 volts over 5K ohms, and I short circuit will be 0 0.8 milliamps. So this is the other number that we need. And we remember from our recipe on the first page that V thevenin equals VOC, so that's 8 volts. And then we know that R thevenin equals VOC over ISC, V open circuit over I short circuit, and that is going to be 8 volts over 8 tenths of a milliamp, and then that gives us a value of 10 K ohms. So Thevenin's theorem says that we can start by, if we have this circuit up here, this circuit in the box, it's driving a load resistor R sub L. We can replace the, all of the circuitry, which is inside the yellow box, we can replace that with simply an 8 volt voltage source, that's V Thevenin, and then a 10 K ohm resistor in series, that's the R Thevenin that we found. And when we do that, if we were to attach our R sub L value to this newer circuit, then what we have is, is R sub L will behave exactly the same way electrically. And the circuit here in the middle, the Thevenin equivalent circuit, is much, much simpler and easier to deal with than the original circuit we had. And remember what Thevenin's theorem says. Thevenin's theorem says that any circuit composed of linear circuit elements and sources can be represented by the very simple circuit of a single voltage source, V Thevenin, which is going to be in series with a resistor, R Thevenin. And so the circuit that we have right here in the center of the page, this is so much simple. I mean, the circuit that you're originally starting from may have millions of elements in it, but Thevenin's theorem, a powerful result, says that that million element circuit can be represented simply by this tiny little simple circuit. And if you do that and compute the numbers properly as given, anything you attach out here cannot tell the difference. It will behave the exact same way. So how do we find these magical numbers of VTH and RTH? Well, we simply take the load resistor, so we take the stuff that's attached to our complex circuit, we make it an open, we find VOC. We take our point of interest, we short it out, we find ISC. The voltage value we need, VTH, is VOC. And then the resistor value we need is VOC over ISC. So Thevenin's theorem allows us to take arbitrarily complicated circuits and represent it by something very, very simple, just a voltage source and series with the resistor. Powerful, powerful theorem. So Thevenin's theorem lets us really talk about complicated problems and really great, get great insight into them. All right, enjoy that. We'll come back again and talk about a variation on this or a real similar result called Norton's Theorem next.